rusty wheel and knew I'd take her home. I brought her to my farm in an Amish neighborhood where simple living's valued. She'd be loved and understood. I put her on a treadle stand and coaxed her wheel to turn. I felt her joy and easing with my study and concern. I cleaned her and I owed her, showed her off to all my friends, repaired the hurts of years of years, and let her sew again. I hope you can hear me. I realized I'm editing this video that I did not do a suitable introduction to this machine. And so I wanted to take a couple minutes and just do that. The machine that I'm working on, it is a Singer, I wrote it down, 9W7. And basically the Wheeler and Wilson was the D9. Singer bought it out and then they marketed the the Wheeler and Wilson D9 as a 9W. And then they took the 9W, changed the base and everything so that it would fit into a standard Singer cabinet, um, you know, with that rectangular shape and the right pin configuration. And that is the 9W7, which is what I am working on. So basically what I am gonna be doing, if you have a Wheeler and Wilson D9, a Singer 9W or this machine, hopefully most of the parts are gonna be similar, okay? With that being said, this is a ridiculously complicated and over-engineered machine. There is an outrageous amount of tiny little screws and springs where you would least expect them and outrageously complicated multi-part systems. Um, so just be warned, you know, this is a full dissection of this machine. So, and I am videoing in excruciating detail just because I wanna be able to put it back together again. So I hope you enjoy it. I hope you get something out of it. If anything, you know, it's painful to watch sometimes. It took me two days. Usually I can deconstruct the machine in a couple hours, you know, at the most. This took me two days. And the other thing is, because it's such an odd machine, it's not like I have a backup somewhere that I can cannibalize parts off of. And so I have to be really, really careful that every single little tiny minute set screw in here does not get lost. So that's what I am up against. I got her apart, you know, just a spoiler alert. I did get her apart and everything, and she is in my tank at this moment, you know, stripping away. But yeah fun machine. So anyway, back to the video. Hello everybody, welcome back. So I am going to start tackling this fun old machine, my Singer, what is it, D9 or 9DW something. It's basically the Wheeler and Wilson turned Singer machine. I will look it up again. I looked it up when I was doing my Singer 115. I was talking about it. Anyhow, it is a rotary hook, so that's fun. It does have a really interesting bobbin setup. Um, everything is different on this machine. I've never done one like this. So I am just gonna get started. I'm gonna film just about everything because I don't think that there are any uh, reference videos out there that I can follow, so I need to document what I do. So first of all, up here on top, a little thumb screw. Hopefully gonna pull this off. It's a little plate, okay. This needs a lot of work and so does this. But I'm gonna go ahead and set this in its own little baggie and put some gloves on because I have a feeling I'm gonna get very dirty. And like I usually do, as I pull a little set off, I put it in its own individual little Ziploc bag so I can keep it straight. Okay. You know what looks easy? bobbin winder looks easy. There is a screw here. I'm going to go ahead and get that hopefully untwisted and lift this bobbin winder off. I just went ahead and while I had things, you know, upright here, I just sprayed a whole bunch of penetrating oil 
underneath and everything so that it can be thinking about itself while I take this off, hopefully. Um, you know, hopefully this won't be too terrible. She is very, very rusty crusty, so of course I am going to be completely stripping and painting her. Okay, so this came off pretty easily. Um, hang on. This has a very big wheel on it. And I am assuming that it's going to be rubbing up against the um, treadle belt and not needing a tire. Okay. So for this, there's a hole in the casting, but there's a little like ball bearing welded in there right here. Okay. And in this, there is a little notch cut out right here next to where this oops, spring in there. Don't lose the spring. Okay, um, right here is that little notch, so that gets sat back on there like so. So that will hold it in place, which is good. So I'm thinking that the spring is going to allow it to engage that little, sh that little position holder where that little ball bearing looking thing is, but it should let it be able to come up again or something. That's what I'm guessing. I don't know. Let me put this away. It's a big shouldered screw with a big spring, and we'll move on. Okay, I actually want to deal with all of this before I work underneath because I got some little wires and things, and I don't want anything on here to get bent. So, first thing I'm going to do is unscrew what looks like a somewhat standard tension, upper thread tension. So, here is the little knurled washer. It's hollow in there, so that's interesting. And then a spring, a very sturdy spring. And is this separate? Yes, it is. So now is a little washer with a divider point in it. Oh dear, what did I just drop? Hang on. Okay, we have other things here. So inside of this washer, there was also a little felt washer, okay? So we have this one with the divider, but underneath that was a piece of felt. And, hang on, let me get a little metal for those. Then I have my two tension discs, which are welded together here. That cannot be the plan, but it looks like it has some kind of a a bushing or something in there but they don't they don't come apart so that's interesting so we'll just leave them together for right now after that there is another felt washer okay so that this is below these so I'm gonna stack it up in order <clears throat> felt washer those felt washer this spring this okay i'm just putting them right there in order now let's see what we have here hmm <coughs> excuse me okay so i see a little screw over here on the side i'm going to try to undo that little screw and i am hoping that will release this part Okay, so we have this tiny little screw. Okay, that goes in here for right now. Um, okay, hold on a sec. So I put my little topmost washer back on so that just at the very top so I can unscrew it because that way it won't spread anything apart. So now I'm unscrewing this whole little post Okay, it does have a little bar inside. Does it come all the way out? It should, I can see it through the slot. There is a little metal piece in there. So let's unscrew this and see what that looks like. Putting this back in its position over here. And hold on. I 
Just got some new tweezers in the mail. Fabulously exciting. I bet that will help. Yes. Okay. So on this little bar, one side is bigger and has like a little shoulder. That part goes towards the outside. The narrower part that's just, you know, a pin that goes into the bottom. All right. So I'm going to set that over here with that little screw. And this is what that part that is screwed into the casting looks like. So if I move you down here to see my cheat sheet, that's what I have. I have this little piece, a felt washer, this, which I have to figure out how to clean out that, um, another felt washer, this, a spring, and my top. Okay. All right. Just for fun, I'm going to go ahead and try to take off, you know, this little piece of rusty needle because no one wants that to stick into them and also take off my uh, presser foot just to get that cleared out of the way. So to start with that unscrewed very easily. Okay. So this is the needle clamp screw. Observe, and it does have a slot and a knurled edge, okay? And, um, it will not come loose, so I think I need to get this little screw back here loosened, which I don't know that I can reach with my presser foot. There, so I'm going to see if I can remove the presser foot, which also unscrewed very easily, thankfully. And if I can wiggle. Okay, so this is the presser foot. That's the little cut in the slot that's going to anchor it in here. And this is the screw for it. It does have a slot, but the way that it is is the screw goes through here. And see that shouldered part? That shoulder part is actually going to be in this part of the uh, foot. So when you loosen it, you can slide off the foot, hopefully, easily-ish. All right, there is an archaic little thread cutter on here, and it does look very dangerous, so I'm going to go ahead and pull that off, too. Um, I need to change my bit. Hang on. Okay. I had to put some penetrating oil on here and everything, but it's little screw is coming loose now on the this is what it looks like tiny little flathead screw okay Put that with my presser foot all right it's sitting on here so it just pops onto the back so at least you don't have to pound it on it's very dirty um, the hole in the back of the presser foot there is a hole in the thread cutter and it just kind of goes up against that and off on this outside edge there's a little sharp finger sticking out right there that wants to cut things okay so I'm gonna put that away for right now and if you can see my lifter lever is moving up and down so that is fabulous let me see if I can get in here now to this little screw I gotta clean the crusties out of it and it is unscrewing, so that is good. I'll grab it so I don't lose anything. Okay, so this is coming in from the back view into the needle clamp. Tiny little screw, okay? So I'm going to grab a magnet, stick that on my magnet, stick this other little screw that came in from somewhere else. Gosh. And then this is the big screw that came in there. Okay, so hopefully this clamp should come off. I'm going to see if I just tap it a little bit and if that will move it, maybe. Maybe. I'm going to get a little plastic tap here. If not, we'll figure it out. There it goes. Okay, don't lose it. And I'm going to try to pull my little broken rusty needle out. 
I'm going to throw that away. I don't want to keep that. Um, this is the needle clamp. Look. Look at how cool that is. Okay, this must be a thread guide of some kind in the needle clamp. See how it wraps around like that? That's what I'm thinking, at least. That is what makes sense to me, to, that they would pull the thread over. I don't know. I really don't know. But just so you know, that is what it looks like with its little guide of some kind cut in there. Okay, so let me put all of these in a little baggie together. Okay, now this looks like some kind of a secondary thread tension. Well, it's like maybe it's just part of the of the thread path because I don't know. It looks like part of the tension, part of the thread path. I don't know. We have a lot of screws going on here. And I am just going to start unscrewing the outermost one first. So there's one here, one here, and one down there. I'm going to try to take this outside piece off first. Okay, so there's like a small, a medium, and a large screw. This is the medium size head. Okay, it has a little shoulder on it. It has threads at the bottom. Okay. Taking that off. Is anything going to move? Not yet. All right, let's take this small, oopsie, let's take this small screw off up here. Ooh, that got something to move. Okay, so taking off the small screw, we have a lot of stuff going on here. All right, there is a little top piece. Okay. This has this little small screw up here. I'm not going to take it out right now. The middle one was in that part. So it looks like the small one is actually holding this on. The middle one was just a positioner is what I'm thinking. Okay. So that was on the top. Then we have a wire here. Under the wire we have this big flat piece and there's a little finger sticking out of it and that does stick up. It sticks towards the outside. On the back, there are two little prongs sticking out, if you can see them. Okay, those are in the back, and they are going to go kind of into these two little holes here. That's not the casting, that's another piece that's screwed on there. Okay, and ooh, there's more. There's more. There is a little, a little bitty bushing. Is it? It looks like a tiny pulley. Oh my gosh, what is this in my hand? Okay, that's just crap. That's not a thing. That's just a piece of yuck. Okay, so it looks like almost a tiny, tiny little bearing. It doesn't have a flat edge like a bushing. It has like an edge like this. So thread must go over that. That must be part of a thread path is what I'm thinking. This little thing sits in the middle of that indent, all right? And this goes over it, but under the wire, all right? We got that? So I'm gonna go ahead and take those off. And I'm gonna unscrew this screw right here. And that should release the bottom plate. Okay, so this is the bottom screw. Looks kind of like a plate screw, the way it's angled up like that. Okay, it's a little flathead. It has the largest of the three screw heads. That is holding on this plate. All right, this is the one with the little indent that that pulley thing can sit in. And the back side looks pretty flat. I don't see any prongs on the back side. All right, so this is the bottom plate. Then we have this spring, and it looks like it's in good shape, and I am so thankful for that. This spring sticks straight out to the side. This is sticking out um, about 90 degrees to the side over here. So when I go to put it back, that's how I'm gonna put it back. All right, so this is the side view. This part here is set into this crevice. And does this come out? 
No, this is part of the casting. Okay. I love my tweezers. All right. So that we have gotten to the bottom of this mechanism. Again, I'm going to throw a magnet in there. And I put a magnet in because it kind of collects all the tiny things in the baggie and keeps the itty bitty screws from getting lost. On, hold the phone. Look, I just noted this. Notice this. It is a very tiny little bushing. This is in total maybe an eighth of an inch across, maybe a sixteenth of an inch hole. That's going to go around one of the screws, but I did not see it as I was taking it apart. So I'll have to try to figure that out as I put it back together. Just thought I would mention that one very, very tiny little bushing is involved here somewhere. Okay. All right. Let me see if I can remove this front plate now. I am thinking just this screw is holding it. No, it looks like there's a side screw over here also. So let's see what we can do here. Okay, so I'm unscrewing this one here. Okay, this is the screw, just a big old beefy flat. And there's another one on the side over here. Okay. Oh, do I need that one off right now? No, I think I do. I think that is part of this piece. So hang on. It's very dirty. Okay, and that is coming from right over here. Okay, so here's the thread lift or the lifter lever. It's right above that. I have a feeling this is actually holding that lifter lever in because I feel it. Yeah, it came off. Okay, so here's the thing. This side screw has a big shoulder. It holds on the lifter lever. It's a very beefy lifter lever, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and just put these two by themselves in a little bag. Just grabbing it and gave it a little yank and the whole thing just flew off. So this is the front. There is something up here I need to deal with. Okay, when I flip it over, it's just a big empty casting. Okay, uh, looks like we have a thread guide over here. Oh, okay, this piece does come out. There's a set screw over here. I'm going to go ahead and take that out and remove this so I can keep all of those pieces together real quick. Okay, so just to show you what I'm talking about, it's this little screw over here on the side. Okay, uh, remove that. It is turning, so we're thankful. Okay. Maybe a little less than a quarter inch long, dirty little screw all right so oh my gosh there's another screw in the back all right so i took this out you'd think that would pull it out but i think i need to undo this screw right here so let me just see all right it is turning oh as i turn it it kind of is pushing that out so it's just push all right so you don't have to really twist it just push it because that thing that looked like a screw is just the back side of this piece and that just pushed it out so that's good all right i am going to keep these two little pieces together in one tiny baggie and put that inside of the other baggie so i can keep them separate that was part of this whole mechanism all right um at this point, I'm not going to pull this thread guide out. I had an issue pulling out a thread guide on my last machine, and that kind of put the fear of something in me. But I am going to pull this out. So it looks like I have a tiny screw right here I need to undo, and that should allow me to pull this piece out. That is my hope. 
at this time and it is turning. I am so thankful that these screws are turning. Hang on a sec. Okay, so again, this is the bottom of this front plate. Another very, very tiny eighth inch long set screw. And I'm gonna see if, does this just punch through? Let me get a punch. That would be better than a screwdriver. And, uh, and see if that will punch through if I just tap it. Okay, I started tapping it. I wanna show, show you what's coming out. I don't know what it is. So we have this thing that looks like a little flat end of a pen. There's no thing there, but I can see a little shiny part of a pen there. This big wire is in the casting, okay? It's just kind of sticking out of the casting there. So I'm going to go ahead and tap this a couple more times. I'm going to do it down here in case something falls. Okay, what do we have? We have a spring. <sighs> Springs go flying. Oh my gosh. Okay, so we have this spring. So this must be another tension thing. If there's a spring, it's a tension thing, okay? So I'm thinking this spring is pushing this little part up against that part. Can we all just agree that we're glad that they simplified this design later? You know, just saying. Anyway, so in this little mechanism here, what we had is a set screw holding the whole thing in. This is sitting like this, all right? The spring up here in this top part like that. When you pull this apart and pull off the spring, pull off this little collar, and then you have this piece. And it does have a flat edge, and I am assuming that that flat edge is what is going to be going against this opening so that when you put that little, well, it goes this way, so that when you put that screw back in, that will be up against that flat edge, okay? Lots to clean out there. Um, I'm leaving that little wire in there. I just don't need that kind of trouble in my life pulling that out. So two thread, thread guide wires are in there. Everything else is out of this piece. And inside this baggie also is that big screw um, that was in the side. Where were you, big screw? Oh, you know what? This was the big screw that was up here holding the entire thing on. So when I'm looking for it later, this big screw, that's the one that was holding the plate on, okay? If I freak out later, remind me of that. Okay, putting that down. Yikes, look at that lifter lever. Oh my goodness. Okay, first thing I'm gonna do is unscrew this finial. Pull that out. Okay, it's about an inch long in the threads and everything. And look at this spring that goes off to the side. What in the world is all of that about? Oh my goodness, okay. I need to um, loosen up this screw here so that this clamp can release from this um, bar right here. Okay. Once again, this thing is ridiculously complicated, but at least the screws are turning, so I'm not going to complain that loudly, I guess. All right, so here it is, you know, another tiny little set screw in that in my dish. All right, this, if this works like any other kind of machine, I should be able to re move this clamp so that it is free from the bar and slide the bar up. I have a feeling I'm going to have to do some more tapping here um, from all directions. So give me a minute to work on this 
I have this little tap here is plastic because I don't want to damage anything. But look, I'm tapping and it's just pushing the whole bar down. <sighs> that is no good. Okay, give me a minute. Okay, this still isn't off, but I'm going to slide this little sleeve off the top. It's kind of like a bushing that floats freely. Okay, it's just a little sleeve that slides over the top of the lifter lever. Again, this is free in here, but it is not free from here. So I'm going to spray some penetrating oil on here, maybe heat it up a bit, try to get that free, and I'm just going to coat this whole area in here with penetrating oil and just let it think about itself for a few minutes. Bring in tapping and working on it, and then it all came off at once. So we need to kind of regroup here and figure out what in the world is going on. First of all, I did have to use my heat gun and penetrating oil and all that. But remember, there was a sleeve up here. This is the clamp that was stuck. But it looks like inside, let me see if I can pull it out here. Please don't have another screw in there. Okay, this clamp goes on the presser bar. It's got this big old piece that's coming out the back of it, and that big old piece is going this way. Um, it slopes down, okay? Slopes down from top to bottom. The part that's flat is along the bottom edge. The part that slopes is on the top edge. So it goes in like this. But we have this piece. And this was kind of stuck inside of there, but I don't think that's its original place because this needs to go on the lifter lever. So tell you what, let me just pull this out. If this is on here, it's like it goes through the top here, and then there's this spring, and then through here, and then this piece is on the very bottom, and these two align, okay? Those two are aligned and both of them are traveling together up and down here. But if that's the case, mm, this has to be, okay, this has to be inside of here then, okay, it's because of the direction it goes. So I put it like this. So it goes top clamp, and it's got this funky spring off to the side, don't forget that. Main spring, this thing, this big old clamp that has the sloping down, and then it's flat on the bottom, and that bottom flat part matches up with this flat part. And that whole thing travels as one unit up and down in here, okay? Clear as mud. All right, so if I pull this out now, and I put these two pieces down there, what do we have with this spring? Holy cow, you know what? We have a spring that I am not gonna remove. I'm gonna leave that spring right where it is. It looks happy to be there and I don't wanna move it because this looks like a spring that would be a royal pain to get back in place. So I'm just gonna show you what it looks like and I'm gonna clean it up in place, okay? So that is my lifter lever. Okay, now on to needle bar. So what I am seeing is I have a clamp right here with the screw from the front, which is nice. And this looks incredibly simple compared to all of the stuff that we just dealt with. Ooh, I need to put this in the other baggie. Hang on a sec. Can't lose that. And these parts are terribly, terribly dirty, so they will be cleaned. Okay, let me loosen up. Well, you know what? I need to dig the crap out of here. Hang on. Okay, now let me loosen up this screw right here. Let's hope there's not another spring or anything in there because you never know at this point. Okay, it's another tiny, tiny little set screw. Will it come out? No. All right, I'm gonna do some tapping with my little vinyl. Mm. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna put penetrating oil and some heat on this before I do any more tapping.
Okay, I went ahead and just cleaned it off with a wire wheel a little bit just to see what I was dealing with because if this is a really tight tolerance, it'll slide off easier if the bar is clean. And I found there is another screw over here on the side. So I'm going to take this one out, which no doubt is another very small, tiny little set screw thing. It is. This one is slightly longer than the other and it has a little nub sticking out, okay? So the one that is towards the front of the machine, this is the front here facing, facing you as you sew, that has a little nub. Don't ask me why, but it does. All right, now I'm gonna try to go ahead and tap it out. Okay, before I take it out all the way, I wanna show you on this side, the side of the needle bar that is out towards, you know, the outside edge we have a little diagonal slot and a large circle the circle the, the bottom circle is you know pretty much straight out to the side but then the upper one is offset just a little bit towards the back of the machine I just wanted to point that out you know because things happen okay almost there hang on a sec Okay, so I was able to pull my needle bar out finally. I have it over here and remember, oh, look at the back. The back has a, a little indent in it. Okay, so the, when you're looking at it from this front side, what you see is this direction. And if you're looking at it from underneath, you would see looking like that, okay? Goes like that, just pointing that out um will this little arm come off yes it will okay so we have a little piece here and it is set so that the deeper part of this dog bone thing is going down okay now is there a way to tell the difference okay the side that has a little step up on it okay there's one side that's flat across the top there's one side that comes up a little bit the one that comes up a little bit is the one that the needle clamp goes into. The one that goes flat across is the one that goes on this little nub right there. And it goes on so that the flat part is exposed like that, okay? So this goes in with my needle bar. Yeah feeling like taking a break here in just a second. Okay, I had to put some fresh gloves on because the other ones were one. My hands were all sweaty, but also they were coming apart. All right, I need to take this lifter out. Um, there is a screw over here on the side. So I'm gonna just put these over here somewhere. Flip out my bit for a smaller one or for a larger one here okay now let's see if this will cooperate you know what i'm going to flip this over on its side but i am going to spray inside here with the penetrating oil first flip it on its side this way this is the screw i'm trying to attack here Hey, came loose. Big fan of the leverage arm, gotta tell you. Okay, I have something large backing out here. What is it? It is, well this to me looks like it's a bearing that should come loose and separate, but I think it's just kind of gooped together. So at this point I'm thinking these are two separate pieces. All right, so I should be able to pull this out. see here from the front if you can see as I turn this cog a little bit can I get it to come free please don't get stuck please um, there it goes okay so that's a remarkably clean little bearing on there huh so this goes in here the usual way. There's a big 
big crevice, you know, it, it goes all the way around this cog that this goes into and this big screw goes in the side like that. Okay, so let me go ahead. Oops, wait, something just fell off. Hold on. What was it? It's that bearing. Okay, it was just the bearing that came off. We know where that goes. That goes back right there. Oh, here's the thing. I'm getting kind of tired right now of dealing with this. And I know usually when I'm feeling like this and I'm dealing with something complex, my next step will be a fatal one and I will let a spring go flying or a screw fall on the ground and I'll end up crawling around on the floor for half an hour at least. So my gut says walk away right now and come back at it another time with a fresh pair of eyes. But I think that I got a lot a lot of good stuff taken care of so far so I'm happy about that but we're just gonna finish this up another day good morning and welcome to the next day um, I feel good about stopping when I did you know just to be safe and everything like that so at this point there's nothing up here and if I turn her wheel you can see, hopefully you can see, this is a rotary hook that goes all the way around. Okay, and that is how it looks when it's functioning at this point. Not a whole lot of stuff going down here. This is interesting. So if I move this little rod back and forth, again, another spring. Um, but just so I can see what it looks like before I take it apart, that is it. All right, so let's go ahead and get with it here. Um, let me get my block up here. You know what, I'm going to flip her back over and try to get these slide plates out first. The first one popped off really easily. Very cruddy. It still has a Wheeler and Wilson shield on there. Um, this is missing a screw. Hopefully, I can come up with something, and this looks like that's the wrong screw. If you can see how it's sticking out, the plate screws are usually, you know, flat on the top and slightly tapered, so I know that's not original. So I'm going to have to come up with a couple, a couple new screws here, so let's just see if this is going to come off easily. Hang on a second, I need to get a different orientation. Okay, I am able to get it off. I just, you know, dealing with short things in here and I was able to crack that loose. So I'm gonna save it, that's what it looks like, but I'm gonna see if I can find something to swap that out with. And again, finding a magnet that I can put into my little baggie so I can keep all these little screws together. Uh, I need a different bit, so give me a minute. I'm just going to unscrew this and this one. So you can see this screw, how it's kind of tapered there and it's flat at the top. That's what I'm looking for for the screws to put the plates on. Okay, can I lift this up? Yes, so this goes over the feed dogs, you know, kind of gross. And this one, will you lift up? All right, so this one is just over this area. Looks like there's a couple holes in the casting, but there's really nothing else underneath there. Interesting. That is part of the casting with this. It's That's just a piece of crud, I think. Yeah, yeah that's just a piece of crud. Okay, so that's the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and put those in a baggie. I'm going to go ahead and try to take this wheel off. So I'm removing yet another very small screw. Okay, from up here. Okay, let's twist this. Yes, that is just threaded on. There is a washer with one tab that is sticking straight out, and it does have. Uh, little bumps that'll fit into these grooves here, so goes like that. 
Hmm, now the question is, will you come off? Looks like this unthreads. This is the pulley part that the belt should go on. Okay, it just comes off. All right, so the part that sticks out goes to the outside. Got to clean that out. It's kind of gross. And now this. It looks like we have a kind of like a springy washer here. Okay, that is underneath. Underneath this piece, above this piece. Okay, taking that off. Uh, there's another set screw right here and right here. So let me pull those two out. And again, it is coming out, so, you know, that's a good thing. If this machine, if these screws were all rested in place, I would have thrown it back onto my shelf and walked away. But I think, because it's so complicated and there's so many screws, but I think because they're agreeable and they are backing out fairly well for me, look how long this is, okay? because they are doing, you know, doing what they should do, and it wants to be better, I will also keep working, you know. Okay. Back this one out. It's probably another long screw. Come on. don't know that all of this is really necessary. It's fairly over-engineered, I would say. Okay, let's see if it'll come off now. Maybe I'm going to get my gear puller and see if I can use that to pry this up. Okay, it is coming off. Yay. And no, I don't have a very fancy gear puller. I have the bargain basement gear puller, but... For what I need, it works, you know. Okay, so the part that sticks out goes to the outside. And that is what she's looking like. Very different. This is, needs a lot of work, too. Okay, let me get this put away. So of these pieces, these three, I am going to strip and paint. This, obviously, I am not. So I'm going to put this in its own little baggie and mark it wheel so I don't forget what these mystery little pieces are for and put these in the to be stripped and painted pile. I'm going to go ahead and remove this which should be a stitch length knob which is really frozen in place and I'm going to need to get some pliers to untwist that. Actually I'm going to spray it down before I do that though. Okay so unscrewing this top knob a washer underneath it okay so we got this knob this washer and then there is a nut a little nut but taking that off look it moves freer now so that's good it's always positive um, after I take this little nut off there is a plate here that I'm going to take off and just keep with that whole mechanism um, just two little screws so let me go ahead and get a tiny little wrench take that off and I'll be right back so my wrench that is uh, what is this 930 seconds seems to fit this which seems like an odd size to me but it is what it is um, I actually need to put a screwdriver in on this side while I'm turning it because I am just spinning freely at this point. Okay, yeah, we're coming loose now. All right, tiny little nut. Okay. That comes over there, and yeah, this will come out now from the bottom, so I'm going to take these two screws off and that plate. Okay, so now looking straight down on it, this is what I'm seeing, okay? I've removed all of the guts, and this is just what's left over 
to move back and forth to adjust the stitch length. All right, so I just want to take a look at this and figure things out before I start yanking things. Um, what I am seeing is the feed dogs, this whole bracket looks to be one piece maybe here that I can just unscrew and pull out. But over here, the this is cast. This is part of the frame, it's cast. And this part here with the bearing that's running up against this cog thing, to me, it looks like I can't remove that until I get this shaft out. So probably the first thing I need to do is remove the whole bobbin area out and then deal with all of that stuff that's underneath it. So I just tore a hole in my yoga mat. Oh my goodness, I'll put a piece of tape on that. All right, so this is what we're looking at this way. Um, let me see if I can get something smaller over there. All right, let's take out the bobbin. How do we do that? This arm lifts up and Okay, so hang on a sec, tighten this up. All right, so this arm lifts up and it seems like it should lift out. Why is it not lifting out? Oh wait, this lifts out and the bobbin slides over that arm. Okay, like that. So the arm is still here, it's just sticking straight out and you slide, look at this bobbin, it's very round. Can you see that? It's like a donut, it's shaped like a donut. It's very round. Anyway, and then this slides over the arm and pops back in. Okay, and I only have one bobbin, so I need to keep track of that. I'm gonna try to take off this bracket here right now because that seems to be locking this in place. That makes sense to me at this point, you know? We're winging it, just let you know we are winging it. So you put that arm down so I don't bend it. Okay. And here's a screw that is being agreeable, so that's nice. Put it there, and the other screw over here, which is also being agreeable. Thank you very much. That is coming out. Now can I get this off? No. What else is holding you on? I, there's so many hidden screws and things on here. I think it might just be grime. I'm going to get a little screwdriver in here and see if I can just kind of pop it off. I think it's just grime holding it. I'm hoping. Yeah, okay. So that's coming off. Hold on. Oh, there's a tiny pin right here. There's a pin. Oh my gosh. Okay, so this is rocking out, but it's not pulling out because. Let's see if I can get this over here. Okay. Can you see right here, right there, there's a tiny little pin or something like that. So I'm going to try to, I have to pull it straight out. Oh, I can see the pin this way now. Do you see that right there? My goodness, they make this complicated. Okay. If I rock this and pull it straight out. Hang on. Where's the pin? There it is. Okay. That is the pin. So that pin, when I go to put this back in, there is a tiny hole in the casting right. Noisy roosters. Right there. Okay. So this, it kinda you kind of get the pin started at an angle. Push it into the hole. Hang on, I'm trying to do this while standing. Okay, so I kind of get it started with that pin in the hole and then rock it down and then push it in. That's the key to this piece. Okay. 
this. So here's the thing. I would like to be able to pull off the whole hook with the bobbin case in it all in one shot so I can keep that intact and, you know, very slowly while I can pay very close attention, take apart all that little mechanism. So turning this, I think I see only one spot right here where there's probably a very tiny screw. And I'm thinking, if I can clean that out, um, that at this point, if I can undo, oh, so much grossness in there, that if I can undo this screw, I might be able to pull this whole race off. So that's my thought right now. Uh, give me a minute to find the right size screwdriver and see what I can come up with. Okay, I got it to break loose. Put my finger under here, so there we go. Another insanely small little screw. Putting over there. The question is, can I get this to budge? It looks like it's wanting to. Knowing how this thing is, there's probably more screws in there. It feels like it wants to come loose, though. Let me turn it. No. I'm concerned that there's another screw in that direction. And you can't even see what I'm pointing at, probably, going in there because it is giving me a little bit of a fight. Knowing this, there's probably some obscure pins stuck somewhere. I hate trying to take off rotary hooks. It's my nemesis, it is. Um, shoot. All right, well, we're gonna try this a different way. On here, this looks like a little arm that will swing out and release the bobbin case, but there's a little screw right there. Okay, I'm going to take off that screw, try to swing this arm open and see if I can pull this case out. And if I can, then hopefully I'll be able to see what's going on underneath it. And that screw looks like this. Okay, it does have a tiny little head at the end, a very flat. You know what? I don't have my light on. That would help. Well, it's morning light here, so it's weird anyway. But that is the screw that's holding on that little arm, locking in the bobbin case. All right. Can I push it open? Yes. Okay. So with that, I'll get you down here because this was exciting. All right. So then, see, this was here, and that's where that screw was. Then I can push it up, okay? I'm sure there's a pin over there holding it. And can I, yes, bobbin case. Okay, that's great. Put that over here. And look, do I see a screw? Okay, hang on, I need to take a quick look at this. It looks like there is a pin there, um, but I'm not seeing any other screws. So what that tells me is I should be able to just pull this straight out. So I'm just going to keep working with it for a bit and see what I can do. Okay, I was wrong. Look, in this grimy little hole, I think there's another screw in there. I think. Hang on. Cleaning it out here. Secondary flashlight, no, no, there's not a screw in there. What is that? That I put that little screw back in. That's the one I took out. I just didn't want to lose it, so I popped it back in there. But that shouldn't do anything. Okay, all right. Okay, I decided to approach this the way I approach all of life's 
big problems, which is ignore it for a while and see if it goes away. I've sprayed penetrating oil on there. I've heated it with my heat gun. And I'm just going to let it sit for a little bit just to see if it loosens anything up. And while that's happening, I'm going to try to pull off these this whole feed dog deal with this spring and everything that's kind of in the way. So it looks like if, and again, this is, oh wait, no, I can't just pull that off. Or can I? Okay, there's a plate here that is screwed onto that main bracket in the back. So, if I pull off this screw, will that release the plate? That is the question. Again, another little screw. Let me get another dish to put that in right there. Um, let's see here. This is that little piece I was talking about. Okay, so that comes free this way now. Oh, okay, so I can take this piece off. All right, this is the stitch length here. Over there, remember, we pulled that out. So it looks like if I take this screw out down here, um, that I can just slide this whole bar out. So I'm going to give that a shot. Let's see. It looks like there's a collar or something on here. I can't really tell what it's on. Hang on a sec. All right, so unfortunately, I don't think that I'm going to be able to pull this piece out can't even see what I'm talking about. This piece right here that the feed dogs are on. Um, I can't pull that bracket out without being able to clear this area and I can't do that yet. So I need to come up with a new plan. Up from the top, if I clear all the junk out, there are some exposed screws here. It's just mounting the feed dog little piece onto that bracket and so I'm just going to try to take those screws off and just lift this little piece off. Okay so here's the hint there are three big screws because you know over engineering um, holding the speed dog on but you only take off the two outside ones because the middle one that screw is kind of like a pin here holding this and the whole thing can just slide over it. Feel like I should be able to get that out. Hmm. Okay. Um, while I am over here, I'm going to see if I can get this off. If you can see, it's, it's like a shaped nut, but it's very long. It's about half an inch long. And up here there's grooves so that I could get, you know, pliers or something on there to hold it while I'm unscrewing this bolt from the bottom so that's going to be my plan okay and that seems to be working so there we go all right so this part is connected to the big nut the screw does not go all the way through this little bitty short screw goes into the back of this and the thing that's coming out the top is not, in fact, connected to this bottom part. It's a totally separate piece. So there you go. I'm going to keep this with the whole stitch length stuff, the little knob and everything, so I don't lose that. And can I pull this out now? Yes. Okay, so this is the stitch length deal. On this part, it's flat here, over here it's got bumps. The flat part is what is going against this casting part, okay? So the bumpy side is out, the flat part is down when you're looking at it this way with the machine tipped up. Okay, so looking at this bottom again, you know, still ignoring my problems. What I can see is that if I can unscrew this this screw here and remove that, um, 
There's a chance that I can pull this out. No, I can't because it's going to run into this casting. Okay, forget about that plan. Forget about that plan. This is what I need to tackle here. Um, all right. I might just get another cup of coffee and think about it for. While I'm, you know, sitting here pondering all of my life choices, I think it's interesting that on this machine there's only one one vertical that's coming down. You know, I'm used to having two, you know, one and then a fork that, that travels, but this only has the one and everything down here is operating off of this one vertical shaft, so that's pretty interesting. I think I'm going to try to go ahead and pull this off down here at this end. It looks like I have a nut down here that I'm going to need to loosen up. And we'll just see where that goes. I can tell that the nut is around something. I'm guessing it's some kind of a bolt. Um, there are set screws here and here that I'm going to try to undo just for fun because why not and what I'd like to do is to at least be able to pull this off you know with the thought that maybe I can just tap the entire shaft out that way that's another thought all right so I have pulled the first screw out so when you're looking at this here's the slot there's a screw here and one up 90 degrees from it this is the one up 90 degrees from it it has a little dimple at the end. Okay, so that's this one. Let me see if I can get this one off and if it looks any different. All right, I got the other screw out. It does not have a dimple. It has a flat area. Okay, so the dimple goes on the side up here. The flat one goes on the bottom. All right, got that straightened out. Let me get a flashlight over here and see if I can see it looks like there and it looks like okay that looks like a big flat area so it looks like the back of this I'm gonna undo this screw here and see if that will release this cog and if it will maybe I can tap it out you know at this point it is worth a shot so let's see here and again, this screw comes out really well. I've really only had trouble with a couple. All right, and this is another little dimpled piece. This has a dimpled screw. I'm going to set it on the other side of my dish over here. And get a little hammer and see if I tap lightly if anything moves. It turned. When I turned it, I see there's another little set screw right here. So before I go any further, I am going to tap it back just a hair to take the pressure off this little piece and unscrew that, that one right there. Okay. Okay, that is a flat. Okay, so for both of these, this one over here is for this piece, there is a nub, a nippled one, and a flat one. Over here, for this piece, there is a nippled one and a flat one. I'm gonna set this dish this way, so those two are in their right orientation, and see if taking that screw out is going to help me any. I really hope it does. Okay. All right, so I can see this bearing is coming loose here. So I always thought that this bearing was attached to the hook. It is not. It is not, and there's a flat washer here that's separate too. Because why not? Okay, let's try this again.
You know what? I am going to clean up the crud right here um, just so it's going to want to go through there smoothly. Oh, I need my I need my powerful Dremel. Hang on a second. Let me switch things around, get my good Dremel in here, clean this off as best I can to try to shoot it out. All right, so as I am pounding this out, this has come free. Yeah, I thought it was coming free, but maybe not. See, I'm just kind of trying to clean it up as I can reach it. Move this cog out a bit. Anyhow, once I get this out, I will show you how all of this is, because I've never seen a hook that looks like that, but that's just me. So, that is off. I'm just going to pull this whole thing out. And yes, I do still need to get this off, I think. I think. But I wanted to show you, I'm not taking this off right now. I'm going to leave that on so that as I'm cleaning it, I can pay attention to the way that everything goes. But if something happens, you know, I'm just pulling threads out of here, and I lose track of it all, this bearing has a little nub sticking out, all right? There is a hole in this washer that that little nub goes through. And then there is a hole in the back of this race. There's a lot of holes in the back of this race, but there's one that is closer to the edge here. And um, that little nub that is going through the washer is going to set onto this bearing area here. Well, it's not right now because it's dirty. And go in there and so that will be lined up now over here there's a little hole there that is where the little dimpled screw is gonna go that is holding this piece on and so I am just gonna go ahead and pop this back on here so that as I'm cleaning oh my gosh did I lose track of which one was dimpled no, I don't know. I may have to do a little bit of trial and error and figure out which one because that's going to have an impact on where this cog is placed. Well, I guess at this point it's either one or the other. There's two options. But I'm just going to put these little screws in there right now so I don't lose them because that would be terrible. Put this whole thing in a little bag. This is the piece that goes at the end, okay? And these two little screws, remember, they went in here also. And we had the one that I pointed out, which was on the bottom and which one was on the side. Okay. Inside of here is a little bearing that slides up and down. And that is going to be slid onto this post here. There is a little bearing sticking out. Of the bottom of here and I believe if I can get this lowered that I can remove that under unscrewing this nut down here at the end but I'm gonna leave that in place I don't see a reason that I have to remove that when I strip the machine it can just stay there we are down to the final here and I think that now I should be able to get this stuff out will this come out here can I just wiggle you out? Can I? Can I? Yes! All right, this is what the feed dogs were screwed onto on this side. This spring that's sticking out, there is a little nub in the casting right there. When you put it back on, you just kind of push that spring over that nub and push it into place, okay? So I'm gonna put this with the whole feed dog thing. Uh, I'm going to find that baggie. All right, so with that out of the way, it's just this. Look, it's twisted like a wrought iron piece right there. That's kind of fun. So getting my trusty screwdriver out of my way. First, I'm going to unscrew this one. And it, with that, I can pull this through the hole. Yay, I'm gonna pop that little 
screw back in there so I don't lose track of it. And then this little piece here, this screw is acting as a hinge. So I am going to take it out. And pull this out boom, like so. Okay, that's how it goes in, flat side that way. I'm just going to put this back in place. Oh, this is what this screw looks like. Big shoulder down here. It's not surprising because that's on there like so. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and screw this screw back in here so that they will be connected the way they're supposed to be. Yes, I know I'm going to have to take them apart again when I put it back together. But so like my process is I'll have this in a bag. I'll take out this one piece. Pay careful attention how it's put together. Take it apart in such a way I can get it back together, clean everything, put it back together, and then put it back in the bag. So when I go to reassemble it, when I take this out, it will be clean, but all of these pieces will have been cleaned individually and reassembled, if that makes any sense. Down here, it looks like if I take this screw off, I'll be able to get to and clean out this bearing. So that is good too. So that is it. That is the extent that I am going to take this machine apart. At this point, I don't even want to mess with the medallion, to be honest. But I should. I should. I am going to be putting this in my electrolysis tank. I need to go ahead and start filling her up with her soapy water solution and get her set in hair. And it's going to take her several days you know, to cook off all of her old paint. So um, next, this will be it for this video. Next time I'll show you how I'm gonna get her all painted up. See you then, bye bye.